Okay, here is problem number six from assessment number two. Uh, once again, it's a uniform distribution of charge, a semicircular um, rod carrying a total charge Q and is distributed uniformly um, along its length. And uh, you're asked to calculate uh, the electric field at point P uh, due to this continuous distribution of charge. Right. So we use the same idea um, that uh, we've used in the past. Um, break this up, break this rod up into little small tiny charge elements, um, call it dQ. So suppose this is one such uh, little element dQ, and since it's a positively charged element, the electric field is going to be away from the charge. I'll call this DE. DE is the electric field due to DQ. And if I figure out the electric field due to each of these little DQs, um, I see that uh, the electric field due to a DQ over here is going to point to the right. And the electric field due to a little dq here is going to point away from it. So we are going to have vectors in different directions as you consider different elements dq. Right? So if you vectorially add them all up, you get the net electric field E to be the integral of all these vectors d. But since but since the electric field um, DE is a vector, and since it's different from different elements, it's easier to look at the components separately. So you see that um, DE has got an X component and a Y component, right? So this is its DEX, and it has a Y component, DEY. Okay, and um, we should be able to see here, um, maybe I'll draw, draw another, another diagram here. If this is your um, semicircular rod, right, and the point P is here at the center, um, depending on where you pick your dQ, since this is all positively charged rod, the dq here will give you an electric field in this direction. That's the dE due to dq. But if I picked another dq here, right, that would give me an electric field away from that charge along that line. That's the dE. And a dq over here will give me an electric field in this direction. That's the dE. So you see, it's easy to see that each of these dQs are going to give me a whole bunch of vectors that are, that are distributed along, if I take a dQ here, that's going to give me a dE here. And when I add these up vectorially, add up all these vectors, it's clear that there will be no y component because pick pick any dq over here, there is an electric field here, and it will have a y component that's going to exactly cancel the y component of this vector here, you see? So from the symmetry of the problem, and since it's uniformly distributed, we can just use symmetry arguments to say that the net electric field in the y direction is going to be zero, and I'll end up adding up all the x components of each of these vectors to give me a net electric field in the x direction, you see? So, so what this really means is, you know, I'll have to do two integrations. I have to say that the x component is the integral of dEx, and the y component is the integral of dEy. You can either set up an integral and show that this is zero, or you can just use symmetry so to say that EY is zero. Right. So we'll really just have a net electric field in the x direction. And we need to um, add up all these DEXs, right? 
the x component of the electric field as I move this dq from one end to the other end. You see? Okay, so, so we are going to be adding up all the x components of the electric field, uh, but in order to write down first the magnitude uh, dE here, uh, we have to use Coulomb's law. Right? And before we can do that, uh, we need to define the charge density so that we can express dQ as lambda dx. Right? So dQ is lambda, yeah, I would have used dx if it was along the x direction. We'll just call it lambda times some small length element. Uh, that's the dL here. Okay, that's the dL. Um, it's hard to draw everything here. The dL is the length here, the arc length, right? And um, the charge density, lambda, is the total charge Q divided by the length. And the length is uh, one half the circumference, right? So you can write it as pi times r. Okay, so we've got the lambda, so using that we can write down the dq as charge density times the length element dl. And if you're wondering what our variable here is, uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, we can write down dx is what we are interested in, the x component of this electric field. And in order to write that, I need some sort of an angle. So um, let's call this angle theta, which is really this angle, theta, right? And as I move my dq, theta is going to be my variable, right? Uh, the x component can be written as uh, the d cosine theta, you see? And... So before I get to that, I need to write down dE, which is, which is the magnitude of dE due to dQ. Uh, using Coulomb's law, I can write down dE as Ke dQ over r squared. And r here is just the radius r, the distance of the point from the charge element. So that's just Ke dQ over r squared. And um, so when we write this here, we've got dE, which is Ke dQ over r squared times cosine theta, you see. And we'll soon be integrating this to get the total electric field in the x direction. But uh, there is a dQ which needs to be converted to the variable theta. And if you look here, dQ is lambda dL, right? Uh, dl is the arc length here, so I can define a small increment in theta, that's the angle subtended by this small element dl here. So this little angle here, there's not much space to write, this angle here is d theta. Okay, So I can write dl as r times d theta. I'm using the arc length formula s equals r theta you may be familiar with that so i'm using our dl is r times d theta clean this up a little bit okay so substituting all that in here i can get my dx to be um, ke coulomb constant dq is lambda times r d theta divided by r squared times cosine theta. Okay, so that's the contribution from dE in the x direction. Right? If I want the total electric field, ex, I need to integrate it over the whole thing. So it's integral dx. And that's integral of all this. Um, I guess I can go ahead and uh, cancel one of the r's. Well, I need to still substitute for lambda, don't I? Lambda is q divided by pi r. So if I take, if I take all of this and substitute for lambda from here, right? And I'll write that all here. So that's ke 
lambda is q divided by pi r times r d theta divided by r square times cosine theta okay so something cancels i guess one of the r's cancels and what are my limits here uh, theta will go from one end to the other this point here will correspond to theta equals zero the point here will be theta equals pi over two and down here theta is negative pi over two so as i move from here to here i can show that um i, I can say that um the limits are from negative pi over two it's negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay. Okay, so we had written down the x component of the electric field um, given by, by this. And we see that um, all this is constant, so I can pull that whole thing outside of the integral, right? So I'll be left with a simple integral of cosine theta d theta. So if I do that, I end up getting ke q over pi r squared. Integral of cosine is sine, right, sine theta, and that's to be evaluated between negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So it's sine pi over 2 minus of minus, well, sine pi over 2 minus sine of minus pi over 2, which is minus sine pi over 2. So this whole thing ends up being, you know, when you, when you calculate it, this is equal to 1 minus of minus 1, so that is 2, right? So that gives you uh, 2. So the x component of the electric field can be written as 2ke q divided by pi r squared. Okay. Or if you substitute all the numbers uh, that are given to us, it ends up being 2 times 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times the total Q, which was given to be 3 microcoulombs, 3 microcoulombs divided by pi times r squared and the radius was given to be 5 centimeters so it's 0 0.05 meters squared okay so if you calculate this uh, the electric field comes out to be 6.87 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb okay so to sum it up um, we have a uniformly charged semicircular rod. Uh, we are looking for the electric field at this point uh, P. Uh, at this point P, and we see that um, there is no y component because of the symmetry of the problem. Uh, we could not have said that if the charge distribution was non-uniform, right? Because it was uniformly distributed, we showed that there is no y component. However, all the x components add up together to give us a net x component uh, given by this. So I can write down the total electric field E at point P to be 6.87 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, or I'll say it's um, 10 to the 6 in the i direction or in the positive x direction, the units being newtons per coulomb. Made with DoodleCast Pro.